Right, so uh, I'm Marco Cognetta. Today I'll talk to you about a small project that I wrote uh, for something in my PhD that ended up not working out. And then I found a bug in it, and so I rewrote it well after the JuliaCon submission deadline. Um, it's called LotteryTickets.jl, and it's about sparsifying uh, deep neural networks that are defined in flux. So yeah, I'm a PhD student at Tokyo Institute of Technology. I work on uh, machine translation, and I also work simultaneously on keyboard language modeling and federated learning at Google Tokyo. And in general, my work and my research and my hobbies are about uh, making models smaller and faster. So this one is pretty much right in my interest zone. So there's a big problem with modern neural networks, and it's that like deep neural networks, as they get you know like as they scale up, uh, they basically require too much space and they're too slow. And like these are these problems are related to each other. And so there's a couple of ways that people have tried to like address this, both the space and the, and the time. Um, and it's sort of like these orthogonal uh, approaches like quantization where I just, you know, I use lower precision in my model and I can, I can do things faster and it takes up less space or I distill it into a smaller model or I use some sort of low rank approximation to approximate some of the heavy lifting layers. And, and these all sort of work orthogonally and they kind of do what you would want. They make things smaller and, and that tends to make th things faster as well. Uh, but there's kind of one other approach that I would like to talk about today. And, and there's this observation that you can make that deep neural models are, are massively over-parameterized. And the reason for this is like, there are several, practical and theoretical. And one is like they tend to kind of train faster, like per parameter count or something like that. And they, and they tend to be <clears throat> more robust to noise, which is obviously great. But like a, the most practical reason is that uh, most neural models are, are implemented as dense matrix operations. And that's really great for um, like current hardware. And you kind of are okay with paying this cost of like having too many parameters if, if your training is a million times faster, a billion times faster, and you can, and you can take advantage of like all of the great hardware uh, that, that we have to train neural models. But um, if you kind of go inspect a model, you can kind of look and see that many of the parameters are not very impactful. So like this graph down here, um, I took from a 100 million parameter distilbert model, and I just, I ripped out all the parameters and I made a histogram, and you can see that it's like extremely heavily weighted around zero. So like almost all the parameters are very close to zero in magnitude, which means that they're not really contributing very much to the downstream performance of the model. And this may give you a clue to like where we're headed. And so there's this uh, kind of hypothesis, that came out of MIT actually, uh, that is called the lottery ticket hypothesis, that deep dense neural networks tend to contain extremely sparse subnetworks that account for most of the performance of the overall model. And there's more to it, and there's like other variants of this, but, but this is the crux of what I care about today. And basically what this is saying is something like, you can find, you can, I can take a fully parameterized architecture, and I can find a subnetwork, which we call winning tickets, like hence the name. I can find a subtopology of this architecture with like, for example, 10% of the original number of parameters, and it'll be as good or better than the original model which is like insane. Um, it's gonna be extremely sparse, it's not going to uh, be a dense matrix, but, but it will be very small. And this sort of like already allows things to run on like hyper-resource constrained systems. Like you can't run extremely uh, heavy models on like on cell phones or drones or, or toasters or something like that. You need, you need it to be small. And so uh, lotterytickets.jl is sort of supposed to help you uh, implement this and, and like, but how would you find a, lo a lottery ticket? This is actually like a really hard problem, but there's kind of a simple heuristic that you can use that's described in the main paper and it's, it's been like kind of expanded upon. And it's kind of this like extremely embarrassingly simple loop. So basically you, you start with your model and you train it to convergence and then you, you like select the bottom X percent, like 10% or 20% of parameters by magnitude and you, and you just remove them from the model. And you reset the model to its initial parameters, not like you're not fine tuning, you're like starting over and you repeat again and you do this until either like uh, you reach the desired sparsity level or your model performance begins to degrade. And so lotterytickets.jl is like the package to basically give you the tools to do this easily with your own flux model. So it, it pretty much provides like two things that, that I wanna talk about today. The first one is, is really the, the key thing is, is prunable layer wrappers. So, so pretty much for all the flux layers, um, we provide a wrapper, like a, 
an analogous prunable type. So if you had a dense layer in your network, you would instead use a prunable dense layer. And we also have like this easy interface that you, if you come up with your own layer, you can, uh, you can make it prunable in the same way that ours are and, and, and hook into all of our machinery. And, and it basically tries to mimic sparse matrices and gradients. So like when you're pruning models, uh, you're, you're sort of removing these uh, from, 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 the, from the matrix, but you're not setting it to zero really, you're like structurally removing it. So we have to kind of take care to do that. And the second thing that it implements is a, is, is a group of uh, pruner types. And these are like basically what tells you actually how you should prune a model and, and which models, uh, which parameters should you be looking at collectively to prune. And like the main one that we implement here, there are others, but they're not included in this library. They're not really related is a magnitude prune group. So it's like it takes a group of layers and it collectively prunes them by some magnitude according to a, a percentage threshold uh, that, that you would care about. And um, so I'll give a brief little like introduction to the, to the underlying um, code. And the, the key thing is this uh, prunable layer wrapper. So they thinly wrap like the layers of a flux model. And the idea is that we want to wrap it and we want to capture and mask gradients um, in order to mimic uh, sparse sparse matrices, so like so in the forward pass, I have like a I have a I have a prunable layer here, and inside of it, there's a regular layer, and there's also a series of masks that can mask out the weights in the regular layer, and there's also a series uh, like some or original initialization weights for when I need to rewind it during the lottery ticket uh, loop, and so like when the inputs come in, I send it to the layer, and maybe I apply the mask to the layer to like make sure that what I'm looking at is really like all the zeros are zeroed out. And uh, I pass it forward, and it kind of goes through the network as you would expect. But on the backwards pass, when I get a gradient, uh, the backwards the gradient comes into the layer. But but before I pass it on, when I compute the new layer, I I have to send it to the masks, and the masks uh, mask the, the gradient so that uh, these like parameters that have been removed don't contribute uh, gradient information to anything else. They don't get propagated up the chain. And so this is like this is basically the whole library. Is this is this. Um, way to capture and mask gradients uh, in, in a nice manner. And one may ask, why are we using masking versus sparse representations? And there's two reasons for it, pretty much. Uh, one of them is, is that until you get extremely, extremely, extremely sparse, uh, doing this masking and a dense matrix multiplication is like orders of magnitude faster than doing a sparse matrix um, multiplication. And the second is that uh, when you're doing gradient updates, when you're doing weight updates, you can very easily like accidentally broadcast an ad or something like that to a to a sparse matrix, and then suddenly the whole thing becomes dense, and like your 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 training time goes up by 500x. So that that's why we would uh, do it this way. And here's a quick like example of how you might use this library. So on the left hand side, I have like a simulation loop of how you would do the lottery ticket hypothesis, and I have a regular uh, flux model, this chain. And I just have prunable dense layers in it. And I have some dense layers, and I have some LSTM layers. Like every L, L, every flux layer is supported, and you can mix and match um, prunable and non-prunable layers. You can do whatever you want. And also, uh, it works on GPU, it works on CPU, doesn't matter. And then I define a series of pruning groups. So I want to prune like the first two layers of this model together, with 20% of them going away, and I want to prune the, the last one, and uh, by itself with 10%. And then I put it in a pruner, and then I and I run this loop where for however many training rounds I want to go for, however many pruning rounds, I train the model to convergence, and I prune and rewind the weights, and then I start again. And at the end, I sparsify it. This produces a sparse representation of the uh, model, and and I'm done. And I have this kind of nice little syntactic sugar over here where I can just like you can define a, a flux layer as normal and slap a prunable macro in front of it, and it will produce the prunable uh, model for it. Here's a few interesting projects that, if you're interested in this idea, you might like. This is the original paper on the idea, and a Python library written by them for implementing this. And there's a, another one about iterative pruning that I didn't know about called tinynets.jl. Um, it does something similar to what we do. And then there's a paper here about uh, a stronger um, version of the lottery ticket hypothesis. And actually, the authors use Julia to implement their um, to implement their experience, experiments, so it's kind of nice. And then finally, there's a, an MIT course about uh, efficient deep learning that, that basically surveys this entire field if you're interested. And finally, uh, the repo is on the left, and my personal site is on the right. Thank you.